News at 10. More violence across Greater Rochester. Four separate shootings are under investigation tonight after five people end up in the hospital. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sam Carter. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get right to that developing news, those four shootings. The first happening at 11 last night. Police say a 34-year-old man was taken by private vehicle to Rochester General Hospital with a gunshot wound to the lower body. Police say it appears the man was shot on Party Street on the city's north side. His injuries are classified as non-life-threatening. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. The second happening just before 1 a.m. on Cedarwood Terrace near Quincy Street. Police say they responded to a report of a shooting. When they got there, they found two people, both with gunshot wounds to the lower body. Both were taken to Strong Hospital and are expected to survive. There is not a suspect in custody at this hour. The third shooting in Geneva as a man is recovering tonight after being shot in the stomach. Police arrived on Clark Street in Geneva at around 1.40 this morning when they found a man suffering from that gunshot wound. They say the victim was walking on a sidewalk when he was shot. Witnesses say they saw a white BMW SUV driving away at about the same time as the shooting. And the suspect or suspects had fired from inside that vehicle. The victim is expected to be okay, but Geneva police are asking for help locating the BMW you see on your screen. Now, the fourth shooting happened at around noon today. A 23-year-old man was shot in the upper body on Jefferson Avenue. Police say the victim was taken to Strong Hospital and is expected to be okay. Anyone with information is asked to call 911. New tonight, a house fire in the city of Rochester has left four people homeless. Fire crews responded to Avenue C around 5.50, around, excuse me, around 5.20 this afternoon. There was some concern that one person was still inside that house, but that person was later found safe outside. That house has been deemed unlivable. Thankfully, there are no reports of injuries. Rochester's fire chief was on the scene and said fires can be avoidable if we take certain precautions, especially because it's been so dry. Well, with this dry weather, we haven't had rain in a couple of weeks, so you got to realize that uh, you know things are easily combustible in the dry weather. Keep them away from the house. You know, keep your keep your garbage and stuff off the porch. You know, just some common sense stuff. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. After two years. After two years away, the Corn Hill Arts Festival is back, and day one is in the books. One of those untouchably beautiful Rochester days today. Weather Authority meteorologist John Bonagario is here to tell us if this fine stretch of weather will continue. What do you got for us, JB? It was a terrific day today across Western New York. Plenty of sunshine, low humidity, a little bit cool, but hey, you can't complain when it's uh, blue sky out there with hardly a cloud in sight. And the clouds are gonna stay out of the way through this evening. Clear skies means cool air. It's gonna be one of those cooler nights tonight. More sun tomorrow, the heat is back to start the week. And then we get some rain by the middle of the week and we really do need it. High pressure through the upper Great Lakes drying us out. Just a beautiful sky uh, after sunset here. Uh, 67 degrees, calm winds. The dew point still in the mid 40s, so we've got quite a ways to fall tonight. In fact, we're going to be back around the 50 degree mark. Upper 40s are possible in some towns south of Rochester, away from Lake Ontario. Uh, feeling a little more like May, so uh, quite a bit cooler than we've seen in recent nights. Grab a blanket uh, for the sleeping weather tonight. Links tomorrow, temperatures in the 70s to start things off. We'll be back near 80 by the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine once again. And again, those temperatures are going to be going up as we start next week. We'll show you when that rain arrives coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Jonathan. Ontario County is seeing a spike in Lyme disease. The Ontario Public Health Office says the numbers this year have already well surpassed last year's figures. 13 Wham's Dalton Williams, he's right next to me, who spoke with the Ontario County Public Health Director just to see why they're experiencing a spike. What do you got for us, Dalton? 
Yes, well, last year, Ontario County saw a total of 87 cases of Lyme disease, and as of right now, that number is sitting at around 110 cases. Public Health Director for Ontario County, Mary Beer, says the probable cause could be the weather. Beer says she believes now that the weather is getting warmer and people feel more comfortable going out and doing more outdoor activities like hiking, that could be possibly why the county is seeing such a high number of cases. We've had some really good weather to, to get out there and uh, people not uh, being careful enough about um, checking for ticks. Tick bites are the cause of Lyme disease, but just because one bites you does not mean the disease has been transmitted. Beer says the tick has to have been on someone for a while to increase the risk. When you come in from a walk outside, that you check for ticks then. Because just if it, it, it's got to be on you for a little while and actually um, be taking blood from you. And so the saliva of the tick gets into your bloodstream and causes t uh, Lyme disease. This disease is entirely preventable, and that's why folks like Donna Gage and Dennis Foster ensure they're prepared when they go out. Just put the, lo the bug lotion on. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to get bit up. You prepare yourself. You know, you wear the right type of clothing, depending on the hiking you're going to do Correct. and everything. So you just kind of prepare that way. Uh, all the common over-the-counter stuff works. Beer says some of the symptoms of Lyme disease are fever, headache, fatigue, and rashes shaped like a bullseye. She does add that there are treatments out there that can help. And so um, it is treated with antibiotics, and um, most people recover nicely, but uh, there is such a thing as, um, I'm not sure if they call it long Lyme disease or chronic Lyme disease. Um, so you can have symptoms for a very long time, and it can be debilitating. Beer says if you're experiencing any of these symptoms, you should contact your doctor as soon as possible. Sam? Dalton, thanks so much, buddy. Three towns in Livingston County got a little bit more beautiful, if that's possible, as murals in their downtown areas of Lima, Avon, and Caledonia were unveiled. Now, the three murals were all a part of a Livingston County program called LiveCo. All nine towns in the county will get a mural painted by artists from as close as Rochester and as far away as Minsk, Belarus, the hope is that these murals will drive interest in the downtown areas of Livingston County. And they are being revealed three at a time now. County Downtown Coordinator Louise Wadsworth says while well, all of this took some doing, the result is spectacular. There's interpretation. When, when the artist gets here, they're going to tweak it a little bit and it's going to come out a little different. And honestly, this is much more impressive on the wall than I thought it would be. The remaining six murals will be unveiled over the next two weeks. And for more on when and where, you can go to our website, 13wham.com. Coming up, fire crews are trying to contain a fire at, after an explosion at a natural gas plant in Oklahoma tonight. Plus, the latest on the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Plus, record-setting heat wave in the southwest. How, uh, how high the mercury could rise. And, of course, Johnny Bonagario is back to share how long we can expect this perfect weather to continue. Stay with us. The 13 Wham Mobile Weather Tracker, powered by Van Bortel Subaru. Wildwood Country Club, the best kept secret in the area for golf. A beautiful 18 hole layout with the newest carts in the area, all equipped with GPS. Plan your next golf outing, meeting, or wedding at Wildwood Country Club. You'll be glad you did. At MT Bank, we believe in the power of together. Together, we can help your business. Oklahoma. Officials say all employees have been accounted for, and so far, no injuries have been reported. A natural gas terminal is also located at the same facility, and massive underground stores of gas may be at risk. Officials have closed roads and issued an evacuation order for a two-mile radius around the plant. That includes the city of Medford that has a population of nearly a thousand. Sri Lanka's president 
and prime minister have both resigned after protesters stormed their homes and set fire to one of the buildings. More than 30 people were injured in the chaos, including two people who were in critical condition and four journalists were also injured in the melee. It comes after months of protests. Sri Lanka's prime minister says he will leave office as soon as the new government is in place. The president says he will step down Wednesday. The country is experiencing an economic meltdown. In Japan, the body of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrived back home in Tokyo. It was moved from a hospital in the Nara prefecture where he was assassinated yesterday. His wife, Aki Abe, traveled with the body. That's as top police officials acknowledged security lapses and said authorities will now conduct a thorough review of what went wrong. The attacker has told authorities he acted because of rumors Abe was connected to a religious organization he opposes. The Army has suspended three-star General Gary Volsky after an apparent offensive tweet responding to First Lady Jill Biden.